least, once again, to least start this video with the wisdom of the Holy Ghost guiding me. I'm gonna let um, I'm gonna go all atheists are welcome to be destroyed and to know that you are one of the most Satan has made this kind of foolishness called evolution to humans and dinosaurs. I'm gonna let this video start to what evolution I'm gonna throw my Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost to tell me to speak. And um, then I'm gonna go to pyramids and dinosaurs and the truth about those topics and um demons truly you you love not the truth but you love a lie, you love your sin, you love the world, so you're gonna believe any demon that whispers in your ear, any demonic occupied person that lies to you, that any piece of the doing anything foolish foolishness, any any lunacy. Any heresy that they speak, you just believe because you don't believe in the truth, God. You don't believe in control. You want to do whatever you want, and then you will be die. But no part of it, you just live and you just you out of all the carnal, counterfeit Christians that million that think they're going to heaven, and Muslims and all that worship demon gods and all kinds of violent demonic fool, fooled um. Just fools, reprobates, deluded reprobates. Out of all them, you atheists are the most fooled by demons and Satan, by the most foolish, most heresy, most foolish thing I ever heard of called evolution. And I'm gonna let this video start off destroying it and making kind of a joke of it. Um, because it is a joke, and it's foolish, and it's one of the most, um, it had to be a dumb demon, or Satan just wanted to create this dumbest, the, the most foolish thing I ever heard of, and see what kind of foolish one way would come with the free will to come to the life so his demons can come into him and make him hell, and since they're not going to be saved and not be born at one of few, they're going to remain food, or the demons whispering in the air, and saying, you're like, keep on sinning, keep on the world, do every lawless thing you can do. Keep on with the iniquity, keep on with the lawlessness. Go ahead, you, you're right, you, you, and you're gonna listen to your demons in your ear, listen to the demons in your soul, and you're gonna keep on getting enlarged and enlarged and more occupied and be more of a demonic puppet by, by falling for this foolishness with your free will. And as you follow for this foolishness and succumb to this foolishness, you demons, you get Dean Little Gun to come in, and since you're not one of the few, you're just damned from there. Um, it's not mind control, it's demon control, like I always say. But be what I'm gonna, I'll see you after this video, and I'll discuss the other topics. For now, be blessed, and um, just enjoy the show. I'll be right back.
I'll take it at that. Okay, keep it at that lighting. I think I got it. Fair use allows to distribute, reproduce, and show clips for criticism, commenting, reporting, teaching, and research. Once in a while, I get people that really, that, or that claim they don't believe in evolution. And my response generally is, so why not? Really, why not? You guys believe 20 billion years ago there was a big bang where nothing exploded and produced everything. 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth cooled down. Made a hard rocky crust, it rained on the rocks for millions of years, turned them into soup, and the soup came alive three billion years ago. Found somebody to marry, and something to eat, of course, and slowly evolved into everything we see today. There are some lies in our science books. But for 15 years, even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. There's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. I'm not against science, I'm not against schools, I'm not against teachers, because most of them don't know what they believe. You have to tell them. They teach the kids it all started with the Big Bang 20 billion years ago. What exploded? This was the textbook teach. Before the Big Bang, <laughs> there was nothing, literally nothing, an infinitesimal nugget of space. And then something happened, triggering the most colossal explosion in history. <laughs> yes, boys and girls, you see, nothing exploded, and uh, here we are. I asked this professor if I could ask him some questions about the Big Bang. I said, where did all this matter come from? He said, well, we don't know that for sure. I said, well, sir, would you please tell me where the laws came from? The universe is run by laws, gravity, centrifugal force, inertia. Who gave the laws? He said, we don't know that either. I said, sir, could you tell me where the energy came from? You know, it takes energy to make a Big Bang. Who bought the gas to run this machine anyway? Hmm? He said, we don't know that either. I said, uh, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? <laughs> Else. What do you mean else? He hasn't told me nothing yet. I said, does Berkeley have a merry-go-round? If a spinning object breaks apart in a frictionless environment, the fragments will all spin the same direction. The professor said, yes, I understand about the conservation of angular momentum. I said, well, good. I'd like to ask you a question then, sir. If the whole universe began as a swirling dot, like you said, why do two planets spin backwards? He said, that's interesting. <laughs> I said, no, that's more than interesting. It's kind of hard on your Big Bang Theory. Not only that, six of the moons are spinning backwards. Why? He said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? Uh, I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, okay, now, sir, hold it. If I told you that I believe God created the heaven and the earth like the Bible teaches, you're going to say, and where did God come from? And I don't know. But you said, well, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that either. We don't know don't tell me my theory is religious and yours is science. Oh, no, sir, they're both religious. Evolution is a religion. You have to believe. I asked the professor, where did the matter come from? He said, I don't know. So basically, I believe in the beginning God, God. and you believe in the beginning dirt. <laughs> One professor was getting kind of upset about this time. He said, uh, Mr. Holman, there are hundreds of varieties of dogs in the world. He said, you mean to tell me that you believe all these dogs came from two dogs off a of Noah's Ark? You expect me to believe that? I said, sir. Would you look at why you're teaching your students? You're teaching your students that all the dogs in the world came from a rock. <laughs> Charles Darwin was disciplined. I mean, he did these extraordinary experiments, this series of experiments. Then they're going to tell the kids, well, we have evidence for this theory. Charlie Darwin hopped off of these islands right there called the Galapagos Islands. Charlie studied the birds very carefully and said, you know what? I think all these birds had a common ancestor. 
Uh, I bet you're right, Charlie. It was a bird. You see 14 kinds of birds, and you conclude that birds and bananas are related. Here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. They tell the kids they have evidence of evolution from fossils. I don't think so. If you find a fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. You don't know that it had any kids. And you sure don't know that it had different kids. You bring in a bone to the judge. Judge, I found this bone in the dirt. This is the ancestor of all the humans today. <laughs> they would laugh at you. You don't know that that's the ancestor of anybody. And why on earth would you think a bone in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? Okay, boys and girls, you have two bones in your wrist, radius and ulna. And boys and girls, look at the whale's flipper carefully. Did you know the whale has two bones in his flipper, and they're called the radius and the ulna? Name is ours. Wow. Who named them, teacher? The whale? Think about it. I'm here to tell my people it's time to stop believing bull. Just because I tell you bull with a straight look on their face. Evolution say people came from monkeys. And the question is, why is there still monkeys? Is these the retarded monkeys? They didn't turn into people just yet. Even Stephen Gould admitted the absence of fossil evidence for intermediary stages is a persistent and nagging problem for evolution. So what's happened, these guys have looked for missing links in the, in the fossil record. They can't find any. And so they say, well, maybe evolution happened so fast it wasn't preserved. Maybe a reptile laid an egg and a bird hatched out. Well, who did that bird marry? This process that brought us to be is billions of years old. It happened very fast, billions of years fast. Here is some um, radioactivity. We're going to tell the kids in the late 1940s they invented carbon dating. We're going to explain a little bit about radiometric dating and how it's supposed to work, and then show you that it does not work, okay? It sounds good, but there are some assumptions that mess everything up. If we had walked into a room and found a candle burning on the table, and I asked you the question, when was it lit? You said, I don't know, Mr. Hall, but it's burning when I got here. Okay, well then, let's do some empirical science. Let's measure the height of the candle. Suppose the candle is seven inches tall. Who can tell me when it was lit? Okay, nobody. Let's do some more empirical science. Let's measure the rate of burn. Suppose we determine it's burning an inch an hour. When was it lit? You're going to have a hard time telling me unless you're willing to make some assumptions. You find a fossil in the dirt. You can measure how much C14 is in it. Very accurately, by the way. And you can measure how fast it's decaying. That's just like measuring the height of your candle and how fast it's burning. Now, when did that animal die? You don't have a clue. Here's what you ought to consider about carbon dating. Samples of known age, it doesn't work. If it's a sample of unknown age, it is assumed to work. <laughs> it's, it's just really hard thing. It's, it's really a hard thing. Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. Freshly killed seal, carbon dated 1,300 years old. Shells from living snails, carbon dated 27,000 years old. Living penguins, carbon dated 8,000 years old. One part of Nemo was 40,000 years old, another part was 26,000, and the wood next to it is 9,000. Then they tell the kids about the geologic column. They say each of the layers is a different age, you know, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, Archaeozoic, all Enzoic boys. Now, if you get a petrified tree standing up, running through different rock layers, I don't think it's smart to say those layers are vastly different ages. Those trees did not get slowly covered by the sediments over millions of years. They would rot and fall down. Let's say, boys and girls, you have an appendix that you don't need anymore. That's the vestigial structure. That's proof of evolution. Oh, well, excuse me, you do need your appendix. The appendix is part of your immune system. If your appendix is taken out, you can still live, okay? but it increases your susceptibility to quite a few diseases. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes also. That doesn't prove you don't need them. There are no vestigial organs. And even if there were, that would be the opposite of evolution. That's losing, not gaining. I was taught when I went to school, man used to have a tail, but he lost it because he didn't need it. I thought, didn't need it? Have you ever thought how handy a tail would be? <laughs> have you ever come to the door with two sacks of groceries? Wouldn't that be nice, man, be able to grab that door and walk right around and get in it? <laughs> Lost it because we didn't need it. Man, you can drive the car and tune the radio knob and hold the coke at the same time. What we're finding is that natural selection seems to be an incredibly important factor 
and generating new species. Natural selection is a key evolutionary mechanism Darwin identified. The bad designs get eaten by the good ones, and so all you have is good ones. Natural selection doesn't cause any evolution. It makes sure the bad ones don't survive, but it's not going to change it to something else. That's what evolution is. If you worked in a factory that produced cars, and your job was to check for defects, and you caught every single mistake, and you rejected it, how long would it take that process to change the car to an airplane? It said it'll never change it. That's my point. The students are taught we have evidence from development. Darwin considered this by far the strongest single class of evidence. This textbook says, the human embryo growing in the mother has gills like a fish. Those little folds of skin are not gills. Those little wrinkles under your chin when you're growing up later develop into bones in the ear and glands in the throat. They never have anything to do with breathing. I've seen folks that have five or six chins and they can't breathe through any of them but the top one. <laughs> Those are not gill slits. Ernst Haeckel, though, said the turning point in his thinking was when he read Darwin's book. He made huge charts of his posters of his drawings of these embryos and traveled all over Germany and just about by himself converted the Germans to believing in evolution. Haeckel took a drawing of a dog and a human embryo and he changed them to make them look exactly alike. On top are Haeckel's fake drawings. Underneath are actual photographs of what he claimed he was drawing a picture of. Now, either he's a lousy artist or he's a liar. Well, it turns out he's a liar. He was convicted of fraud by his own university, proven to be a fraud. But guess what? Haeckel's fake drawings are still used in textbooks in your state right now. It's only been proven wrong 125 years ago. I know it takes a while to get textbooks up to date, but that ought to be plenty of time. Adolf Hitler said, if you let me control the textbooks, I'll control the state. Watch this sentence here carefully. Some kid's doing this for homework tonight. Boys and girls, do you think humans are still evolving? Now, what kind of question is that? Doesn't that question assume that evolution has happened? What if a kid doesn't believe in evolution? How is he supposed to do his homework tonight? That question does not teach him how to think critically. That teaches him what to think, not how to think. And when the kid gets done with this course, he's going to think he knows how to think. But he doesn't. He knows how to be told what to think. Brainwashing at taxpayer expense. They want to use my tax dollars to teach that to your kids in our schools. If you want to deny evolution, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. And that's where the problem comes in. Okay? If you want to believe in the Big Bang, just enjoy yourself. But keep your religion at home. The Russian atheist astronomer came to America and spoke at one of the universities, and he said, started off his speech. He said, folks, either there is a God or there isn't. Both possibilities are frightening. If there is no God, we're in trouble. We're hurtling through space around the sun right now at 66,000 miles an hour. And nobody's in charge. <laughs> That's a scary thought. But if God made the world, he owns it. That means he makes the rules. You see, if there is a God, we better find out who he is. And find out what he wants and do what he says. Malcolm Muggeridge said, I am convinced the theory of evolution, especially the extent to which it's been taught and applied, will be one of the great jokes in the history books of the future. It's a joke. And it would be a joke if it weren't for the tragic results. How many kids are taught this thing every day and believe it, and it destroys their faith? Hey, if you died today, where would you go? You ought to think about it because you will be dead for a long time. Doesn't matter how long you live, you're going to be dead longer than that. You know, George Washington died 200 years ago, and he's still dead. How much longer does he have to go? He'll be dead for a long time. All you get in this life is a little bitty dash between two dates. Just a little drink and it's gone. What are you going to do with your dash? Where would you go if you died? Now, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, you've got to give your heart to the Lord and get saved. Say, Lord, you may have it, the whole thing. If you are saved, you've got to find something to do for the Lord. And you got to quit worrying about getting a fancier car and a fancier house and start worrying about who's going to heaven or hell. Maybe God gave you that good job so you can give some money to missionaries. Not so you can build a bigger, fancier house. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And if you don't want it, well, that's your business. But the devil is laughing at you for believing in that. But God loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And if you'd like to find out how to go to heaven, come see me. I'll be glad to show you.
the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang, there was nothing. Literally nothing. Nothing created everything. The Big Bang is an amazingly difficult thing to wrap your brain around, which isn't surprising. 13.7 billion years ago, we think it was tiny. Nothing. Literally nothing was tiny. And then something happened. Nothing created all the matter we see in the universe today. <laughs> nothing is more powerful than nothing. And that's what trips most of us up. It was the explosion of nothing. Finding something to believe in. We're all getting crazy. And you better believe something. Fair use allows to distribute, reproduce, and show clips for. Let me ask you, how can nothing make nothing and create something? You atheists, tool that allowed your, your foolish, demonic-controlled, reprobate, delusional, inner reality to the actuality, foolish little soul of yours. And besides everybody else that thinks the same, you people have been fooled more than anybody. You think uh, the most foolish thing I ever heard. Evolution. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't have to. Oh, and talk to the Christian teachers while I'm um, watching the video. I think it's going to say to you. So, you heard that false teacher would be falling like a fire. So, if you claim that you know that what you're teaching is a lie and you're a Christian and day by day you teach it does it make you a liar? I thought the Bible says liars go to hell so then that you continue to teach it but then say repent and say sorry I almost said repenting is not just saying sorry it's overcoming and it's quitting doing what you're doing you eventually overcome if you repent. Now, so if you a liar, and liars go to hell, and false teachers go like a fire, and go to hell, then you just gave yourself teaching that, and still claim, and claim you're Christian, you carnal, fruitless, powerless, counterfeit, new age American Christian, you live in an apostasy and accommodating Christian and you're going like a fire. Millions and billions of people. Okay. okay. Besides that. If you, it, science is a lie. Psychology is a lie. Theology is a lie. Only the Holy Ghost has true wisdom. And that's why I count on. I count on the Holy Ghost. I don't count on man. I don't count on a demon in my ear. I count on the Holy Ghost.
So, if you if you you so called Christians, you people that would dance, teaching when you can be taught lies, and when it can be taught with the free will to come to lie, and then when they succumb to lie, they're impacted and they get demons of deception and a religious spirit lodged in them. And they permanently fall for the lie, like the one of the cho- called and chosen, and one of the elect. They permanently fall for the lie, called chosen. They permanently fall for the lie, and they're not saved. They're not reborn, and they're permanently and they're permanently damned. They're left away, and they're a strong delusion because they learn not the truth, but they love lie, and they miss the chance of the gospel. You damned your kids. So good luck at the journey to the quest. Now, to move on to payment. Okay. I'm gonna ask you. The world is like 5,000 to 6,000 at max, 15,000 years old. I can confirm that. With the wisdom I got from the Holy Ghost. Now. Let's just go through dinosaurs. I want to get this dinosaur thing done. Where did the dinosaur come in at this time? Let me ask you. What's more crazy to think that there was no timeline where they existed? And that the witches at that time, that the, um... The satanic people that worshipped the demon gods at that time also brought out the demons and the demons orchestrated and made those bones and then out of whatever they did, um, out of pe- people's bones or how that they made it, but they made those bones and they buried it in the ground to take people that also existed, but it really did them manifesting, making those bones when they when the witches gave them blood, they made those bones and they buried it in the ground. To because the dinosaur existed, but it's really when the, if dinosaur never showed up, it was them manifesting the natural trick to deceive. So if dinosaurs weren't real. They were manifesting natural other dinosaur, and the witches or the Satanists at the time gave blood onto the demon gods on the Pentagon, and then the demons orchestrated and and made those bones, those false bones, how, you know, only some supernatural could do this. Uh, either without a parts of um, sacrificed human bones, or they just, that, that the thing they sacrificed on the, um, on the place like Stonehenge, they just take bones and they, and they, and they even twist them and they twist them and they, mess them up and they line them up into into um uh, order to look like a dinosaur like a skeleton they bury them and then the rest they storm so later they can put them in a museum but they really basically either DMA the whole thing or they take sacrifice human bones twisted and, and tampered and manipulated and make it look like a dinosaur bone um and then they then you have the the false, or well, however demons did it, but the demon did it, and then you have all this delusion, because demons Satan can do, can think, can deceive, and he already been deceiving with all this false foolishness, and um, you know I don't I don't want to debate with any of you people, I'm not here to debate, I'm here to teach. Unless you can put me in the Bible wrong, I mean eradicate what I'm saying, unless you have the Holy Ghost, unless you're walking in power, the Holy Ghost manifesting and exalting itself through you, healing the blind, signs following, power, power, full of the Holy Ghost, exalting power for you, full wisdom from the Holy Ghost, 
one with you. Unless you're that call chosen, I don't want to hear from you. I'm here to teach, and that's it. Okay. Now, the fame of the pyramid that the people, that the Egyptians could make pyramids out of not even hard metal. It was like bendy, breakable metal, whatever it was. But and they just made it, made it that, that hard, heavy brick. You think that, that if, I grab my, if I grab some metal and I bang it together, 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 bang it together on, on a walk, I can make a pyramid. It took a million years. It didn't take a million years. When it wasn't really, it's not, it's not possible. The demons made it. The pagans at the time offered blood onto demons. The demons created, manifest in the natural, created a dust devil, and to represent the satanic kingdom and to create an idol, and to be used for them, for the demons inside there, or the satanic elite inside there, the witches to watch for Jesus, to watch to be a stargazer, which is forbidden in the Bible, to try to watch for Jesus and the signs and all that. They um, created those pyramids. And they used it to try to watch for Jesus, to watch the stars, to be a stargazer, and that's forbidden in the Bible. The demons created the pyramids for an idol, to have, and also represent the Titanic Kingdom for idolatry, and it's also forbidden to make these columns and make all this stuff in the, in the Bible. All the stuff, all this fancy demon made to idolize and represent the Titanic Kingdom and demonic stuff, and to be used to do star games and watch for in for the satanic elite witches to watch for Jesus, which is forbidden in the Bible. Demons made it. The demons made it. This is the truth. You can believe or you cannot I can be a level bait. But they didn't have no diamond cutter, they didn't have no claim, they had this not even hard metal, not even hard stick or whatever it was, not even hard. It was very soft, it was, it was kind of breakable, and they were being on the hardest rock that it, it, it's even hard now nowadays with the diamond cut with one of those diamond cutters and and um. And, um, those things that cut through metal and diamonds. It's even hard for all, all that kind of stuff. For the really advanced diamond cutters to cut through this hard, 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 heavy rock that made the pyramid. Demons did it. Demons did it. Feel like they somehow made the bone made the dinosaur bones to create a delusion. Satan is the master of lies. And um he just is. He is the master of deception. And you've been deceived by him. Um but um I think I'm done. If I had to do a part two, I'll make a part two. And I'll watch this over to see if I got anything I need to get. But for right now, be blessed in Jesus Christ, my name. I think I'll call this video All Atheists Are Welcome. And you atheists, probably you won't because you already reprobate. You already learned out the truth of the red light. You missed this chance. You're not called chosen. You're just damned. And um, you're not one of the few, and you're just damned. You succumb to lie with your free will, and you allow yourself to be en enlarged and impacted and, and just 
demons, demons, legion, the legion, the demons, the god, dead new, or how many other demons, whispering in your ears, envision, envision, told, false doctrine, the most foolish false doctrine I ever, I ever, was the, the wisdom that I got from the Holy Ghost, that I ever, ever, it, it's just, it's just foolish, heresy, the most heresy you can ever imagine is what the atheists believe. Just because you can stay in sin, stay in the world, and make your own rules and make yourself as God. What you do fall for is fall for anything. If you're gonna, what you're going to fall for is the New World Religion, the New Age Movement. Because it, it accommodates to the way you want to live, and you make yourself as God. You're going to also pay for, fall for the false Jesus coming. The false Messiah, the false Savior, the Antichrist, or not the beast, the one of the beast. But you just fall for the most, most, I bet Satan laughed when he made it, because it's so funny, once you think about it, it's so foolish, that when Satan made this biggest heresy, one of the biggest heresy ever created by Satan and his demons and his fallen angels, and know that I take, it took a very... Jewish and already for the first sin occupied by a demon and deceived by demons from the start to fall for this stuff and more demons occupying them and impacted and lodged in them to keep falling for it and put on the level of their mind, miss the gospel and not be not be called chosen to not be saved or reborn from the spirit and just be damned because they fall for the foolishness. They fall for his one of the biggest heresies he ever orchestrated, he ever he ever created, and um, it's just a demonic, foolish, orchestrated, and came to be made game. You just have demonic puppets. It's just here. It's just, it's just abomination. It's heresy, and um. You have to be a uh, very, at the start, demonically deceived fool to fall for it at the first time with your free will, and to fall for it and get more enlarged and more deceived by other demons. And they keep deceiving you, making you a reprobate and a strong delusion, and then you're just damned. Be blessed in Jesus Christ, my name, if I have to make part two. I feel so glad to make part two. But for now, I want you to be blessed in Jesus Christ, my name, and have a good night or good day. Bye. There's nothing else for me to really say. There's no reason for me to have my much speaking. But it's, it's just a lie. It's a mockery, it's an abomination, it's heresy. It's an it's a possibility, it's just a, it's foolishness. Be blessed. In Jesus Christ, my name. Have a blessed day, a blessed night.